ask you. There's a sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it must be the spirit of God. The spirit of love. And the old session said, reach out and touch the Lord as he goes by.
we could do for our city. Because if you think about it, you didn't even wake yourself up this morning. And if he didn't give you a portion of your mind and a portion of your strength, you couldn't have gotten dressed this morning. So we owe God our praise on this morning. So many times we give all of the credit to everybody else. But we forget about God. Sometimes we'll go home and we'll hit our ADT. But it was G-O-D that stayed on duty all night long. I heard the old saints say he didn't let a fire break out. He didn't let a thief break in. But I'll say he didn't let the death angel stop at your door. So you owe God a praise today. that the jurisdictional choir will come and bless our hearts on tonight, amen, and give us some audience participation, amen, the more you put in, the more you get out of it, amen. Thank you. 
Think about the comment this time. Amen? Amen.
Usually the earth is the very first person you see. Amen. Amen. And when you come in, they should let you feel that you're at home. Amen. Make you feel comfortable. Because what? I'm trying to make everything complete. I want to have a complete body, so I want to have a complete church. So if I'm going to have a complete church, I've got to do what I'm supposed to do. Am I right? I can't do what anybody else do. I've got to do what Samuel's supposed to do because I want it complete. Same thing with our body. You know, you, to be complete, have a complete body, your body functions got to do what they're supposed to do. Amen? Amen. The church is an important co-worker. Listen, co-worker with God, the pastor, and the congregation. But maybe I just need to say that again. <laughs> He's a co-worker with God, the pastor, and the congregation. What did I say? Co-worker. You're working with. All right? If we want that body to function properly, we got to do our share. We got to work with every part we got in our body. Amen? Your brain tells your feet to move, but if your feet don't move, what good is the brain? You're not moving. You're just going to sit there. So same thing with our, with our church. We've got to learn how to function properly within our church. Yeah. Amen? Amen? Amen. The earth should make the initial impression for the church. When you meet your earth, you're going to get the impression about the whole church. If you meet an earth that's not nice and not kind, you're going to think about the whole church. Man, what kind of pastor is this? The earth is going to have a reflection not only on your pastor, but the whole congregation. <laughs> Amen? That's what we got. We got to have that attitude that I'm going to make you feel good. You might come in here feeling bad, but gosh, when you come through that door, you're going to be feeling better when the preacher gets ready to preach. All right. Because we're going to set the atmosphere before the preacher comes. I don't know about you, but I just love God. And if I love God, then I've got to love you. I cannot love God and then they don't love you. So what I'm going to try everything I possibly can to make conducive to your uh, spiritual experience. An usher who performs his or her job well makes an individual feel like the singer of the verse from Psalm 121. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. That's the way we're trying to make you feel. We're going to make you feel like I was glad when they said let's go to the house of the Lord. Lord, have mercy. <laughs> it took all that to get me in here. Amen. Urshans are servants of the people and ambassador of kindness. And Urshan performs his job. I'm sorry. Urshans are servants of people and ambassador to kindness. To be chosen as an Urshan, listen, to be chosen as an Urshan is more than an honor. It is a ministry that honors God. A ministry that honors God. Don't bring everything about yourself. It's not about you. It's all about God. Amen? It's all about God. We don't have to have all that glit and glory, but we want to bring glory to God. All right? It should be selected with care. Just don't get anybody. Selected with care. Elected with integrity, dignity, and trained to fill his or her position in a place the kingdom of God. We want to get somebody that's what? That's kind, chill, honor, and bring glory to God. Amen. Amen. Amen? Don't you feel good when you go into a church and they just make you feel so good? They're smiling, dress nice, shoes shine. Don't you make you feel good? If you got clean usher, then you're going to say, this is a clean church. All right. Isn't that wonderful? Amen. Our pastor always tell us, you see something on the floor, pick it up. <laughs> Amen. Just pick it up, all right? At Ursula, at heart of an Ursula, the heart of a servant. You know, a lot of times, we as people now, we like to be served. All right. But it's just the opposite. We are to serve, not to, we are to serve, not to be served. And it does work for the Lord Jesus Christ. That's what we are doing. We're trying to make it comfortable and bring people to the Lord. Amen. When the, when the people brought me to Christ because they were children, they were nice, they were glorious, and they would talk to me. And that's what brought me into the church of God in Christ. Because what? I was lacking the atmosphere. I was lacking the tone that was sitting when I walked into the church. I don't know about you, but this grand old church of Christ that brought me this far. So I'm not leaving it because what? I want to take it just a little bit farther. And churches have a true love for the people of the church. 
a true love for the people of the church and desire to promote an atmosphere of reverence. That's it. That's it. Promote an attitude of reverence. Yes. Can I say that again? An attitude of reverence and worship in the house of God. An urgent thing could well be like Psalms 84 and 10. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of God, in the house of my God, than dwell in the tents of the wicked. Amen. I just, just, let, me be, just let me get inside. <laughs> Amen. I was telling my wife when I had her talking, if I could just get to the church. If I can just get to the church, I'll lay it up, heart wide open, and just lay it open. But I'll tell my wife, if I can just get to the church, I'll be all right once I get there. Amen. Once I get there. I, I heard the minister talking about the ball games. <laughs> and I was a Dallas, Cow, Dallas Cowboy fan. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> and I was one of those people. I went to church. I went to Sunday school. I paid my dues and everything else. But when the Cowboys playing, I was... Yes, sir. All right. All right, Dallas. But one night, something happened to me. Amen. I tell you what, that cowboys play all they want to, but I won't see them to laugh to church. <laughs> I get them on ESPN about 2 o'clock in the morning. They have a replay. <laughs> I watch it then. Amen. Thank the Lord for Jesus. All right. Church church should be well-versed in murder procedures. Well-versed. And emergency We should have a plan to get the people out of the building if that's case for the emergency. Yes, Fire could possibly break out. We should have our wraps already already prepared for them. It should, it should be posted. Yes, sir. Yes, escape aids and it should be posted. But there should, should know where and who's supposed to go where. Because a murder is going to happen sometime. Don't think that just because we're here tonight that it's never going to come. Because sometime a murder is going to rise. Amen. And we need to have a plan before the emergency arrives. You don't wait till you have a wreck to get insurance. You get insurance before the wreck. Amen. So we need to get these things squared away before it actually happens. Amen. Talking about our ushers. I mean, our ushers are right. I'm not talking to them. I'm talking to the other ushers. Amen. Amen. In Romans, I think I've read this, but I just want to throw those few nuggets out. And we are going to praise the Lord and have a good time. Amen. 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 That's what this is all about. We are going to enjoy God. Amen. And I appreciate you listening, but I'd like to let you know that I am, I am uh, really a person of Christ. I love the Lord. I love my pastor. And I love the grand old church of God in Christ. Amen. Thank you. God bless each and every one of you. And looking to your left and looking to your right, I would like you just to say this word, achiever. Achiever. Because that's what each and every one of you are. You are all achievers. You are extraordinary people doing extraordinary things on a daily basis. Now, I know Golden State is playing tonight. And I know tip-off was about 15 minutes ago. But you know, Bishop said something last night about Sunday school. He said, Sunday school will last you forever. I don't know if y'all heard, but he said forever continues. But Sunday school is very important. So I was uh, checking with Elva the day and I was telling him, I said, Elva, I'm ready. He said, well, are you ready? I said, yes, sir, I'm ready. He said, what do you have? So I gave him this. He said, where's your party? I said, well, I got it, Elva. But anyway, you know, I was thinking about this word the Lord put on my mind was the word achievement and the achievers prayer. And if you would, I would like to just read this to you. He said, good morning, Heavenly Father. I am very busy today, but knew I need to stop and talk to you before rushing to my day. Forgive me for being too aggressive at times and rushing into projects that I never brought in to you in prayer. I've done so many stupid things and made some wrong decisions, yet you have kept your hands upon me. I am so thankful for that. Now, curse my agenda today. 
Take out of my life those who break my focus off your assignment. Bring into my life those who grow your dream within me. Protect me. Talk to me. Keep your angels around me every hour of this day. I will speak your name with joy and thanksgiving. I will celebrate your presence and tell others of your loss. I shall embrace your wisdom every single day of my life. In Jesus' name I pray. I start my day with this prayer every day. I remember when I was a student at Arkansas Baptist College and at that time, uh, Elder Rogers was an instructor over there. And he would give us all a copy of the Old Testament and the New Testament. And you know, our first assignment was at that time was to learn the books of the Bible. Well, you know, I was Cadillac slick, you know. I made me a cheat <laughs> So, you know, he, he, he took his normal seat. You know, I'm up here and I'm reading. And then he said, uh, Brother Allen, that was very good. Now say it without the paint. <laughs> so, I tell you, you learn so much as you travel through life. You know, there are so many people that are achievers before you. You never know who God sets in your life. Now, I'm not going to stand here and, and, and tell you to be angry at our children. Because we shouldn't be angry with them because they don't have a car to drive to Sunday school, mother. They need you to bring them to Sunday school. And I tell you what, if you bring them to Sunday school, God will bring you on in too. Yes, you will. That's the most important part of the day. Is Sunday school. Start with prayer. Now, prayer don't start at 8.30. It's better than your job. It don't start at 8.30. At 9 o'clock, we start praying. At 9.30, we go into Sunday school. In that order, get something. Study your word. Read your Sunday school lesson. It makes it easier on the teacher. You know, we tell our kids, don't go to school and eat the teacher. Don't come to Sunday school and fuss at the teacher. We've been tasked with a, a duty. And I want to show myself words. That's why I study my lesson. I want to read and have understanding. And I'm not standing before you saying that I'm an expert. I want your insight. What you know. What did God tell you? Tell me. Because he's sitting right next to you and I want to be near and I want to be in that zone. Now, as we look at this, how do we get men to respond to Sunday school? We have to understand how a man's mind works. Well, Lord have mercy. All right. I accept that. You know, men like to be involved with other men. Men respond when other men are going to church. When you create a place for men, they will come. Every year, just like Brother Bundy said, you know, the ushers have a job to do. Everybody has the same. There has a pastor was saying the other day that there are prayer warriors assigned. I, now, I don't know who they are, but I know that they are saints, and that is good, because we've had some disruptions. Now, instead of getting angry, I was so glad that our, super, our elder was here, because he handled it. And you know what? He didn't handle it out of anger. He handled, he handled it out of love. I mean, they were real loud. Real, real loud. I mean, I had never, ever seen it in the church, but they did it, but... The other and some of the senior deacons, they all got, and they were okay afterwards. But they wanted a confrontation. And they didn't, they, they approached them, the elder approached them with love. Boy, you know, you should have just seen that devil run out that back door. I mean, what was just, I mean, it was, what, oh, what kind of day they gonna be? But, but that, that has happened, I'm just letting you know. But you know, men come to church where they are treated equal and beneath a title holder. Look, people are getting hung up on title holders. They will. Let's treat them with love and dignity and respect. Everybody can in this church. We want to welcome you with love and dignity and respect. And if you know what, if you need counsel, there's someone to speak to. 
if you need confidence in what you're saying, there is someone that you can speak to. We're not judgmental. We're not. We need you, Sunday school. We need your children. We need you, women of God, men of God. We need the church full every Sunday at 9 o'clock. Title holders have to interact, interact with brothers. We got that. So how do we inter interact? Elder Thad, God bless you. It's good to see you. I love you with the love of Jesus. That's how we interact. Not saying, man, I, I heard you was at the club. No, no. no I ain't heard nothing. I, I, I want to interact with you with love, dignity, and respect. I want to treat you that way. Because if I cast that out, it's going to return to me. Amen. I can stay out here a little longer, but I had my task. I've done my task. God bless you, Jesus. Praise the Lord, Arkansas Second Jurisdiction. Oh, come on now. Let's sing our hand and pray. Amen, amen. First, giving honor to God who is the head of my life and to whom all honor is due. I would like to give honor to my pastor, First Lady, Elder Timothy Hobson and Lady Marilyn Hobson, and all of New Calvary Temple that's in the house. I also thank God for um, and giving honor to my New Day District AIM President, Elder Willie Baker, and to all of New Day that's here, amen. You got to talk about your home a little bit, amen. Amen. So during our District AIM a few months ago, um, I spoke about the importance of Sunday school to the church and the benefits to students, and I was asked to share that with you on tonight. So I am a little nervous, so I just ask that you pray for me and pray with me. Amen. Sunday school, arguably the best school in the world, should play a major role within the church as well as a believer's life. Unlike some ministries, Sunday school is designed for everybody. And believe it or not, everybody needs Sunday school. No matter your age, level of education, your career field, your position within the church, whether you're single, married, a seasoned saint, a babe in Christ, you need Sunday school in your life. First Peter two sec, sec, first Peter, second chapter, second verse, the New Living Translation says, Like newborn babes, you must crave pure spiritual milk so that God will grow you into the full experience of salvation. Sunday school is a part of milk in helping to grow a church and your relationship with God. Just like it's vital that a newborn is placed on a consistent feeding schedule in order to grow into and remain a healthy adult, so does our spiritual man. Our churches today are filled with many adults who feel they do not have to attend Sunday school in order to be in order. We learned last night that what we do as adults affects our children, amen? We have the mindset, not realizing our churches are not growing and our membership is shaky at best. It has gotten to the place that we can't pray our way out of the most minute situations because we either don't know or don't have enough word down on the inside. I can't stress enough the benefits of attending Sunday school. It's in your time to... It's, it is your time to learn the word and ask questions when you don't understand the significance of the scriptures. Yes. Attending Sunday school will give you a better understanding of the word you are being fed on Sunday morning. Depending on what time your Sunday school starts, it should be viewed as the appetizer or the dessert before or after the word. I don't know about you, but my morning's worship is not the same when I don't go to Sunday school. Sunday school is the gateway to creating strong leaders within the church as well as strong members. The house can only be as strong as the individuals who are occupying it. It matters not if every seat in your church is filled or if you only have three members. Sunday school is important for your four walls. If you have some that believe in attending Sunday school and some who refuse to miss an extra hour of sleep to attend Sunday school, I encourage you to encourage them to come to Sunday school. You need to find a way to draw them. If you are an elder, a minister, a deacon, a missionary, or a leader over any ministry, you should be a regular attendee of Sunday school and encouraging those in your peer group to appear as well. Sunday school is the only school that was not designed for its students to graduate with a diploma, 
an undergraduate, a master's, or a doctoral degree, but rather it's designed with a continuing education concept. Just about every job has a mandatory continuing education requirement. If you want to raise a promotion or a favorable evaluation, you must attend a continuing education class. 2 Timothy 2 and 15 says, Study to show thyself approved unto God, not oneself. Meaning you have not arrived when it comes to learning God's word. Yeah. You also should not be made by the pastor to attend Sunday school. You should be like Nike and just do it and do it unto God. You should have a mindset that thinks Psalms 84 and 2. My soul longs, yes, even faints for the courts of the Lord. My heart and my flesh cry out for the living God. This should be ingrained in your heart and in your mind when it comes to Sunday school. If you are not attending as a student, as a leader in the church, you should sure, definitely, without a doubt, be a teacher. Your role in the class is important and major to help the growth of your church. Sunday school helps you connect every helps you connect even more to your church family. Something about learning the word of God with a group of believers helps one to mold and solidify who they are in Christ. It also allows one to develop individual relationships, build trust, and become even more planted within the church. Your Sunday school class should be your immediate family within the church. Sunday school is more than just coming to class. It's a community of believers working together to look out for each other while carrying out the pastor's vision. Psalms 133 and 1 talks about how good and how pleasant it is for us to dwell together in unity. When we dwell together at Sunday school, it serves as a tool to unify the church. The Bible tells us in Proverbs 27 and 17, as iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens the countenance of his friend. Sunday school is a tool that makes for a stronger and sharper church. Amen. Ecclesiastics 4.12 reminds us, though one may be overpowered by another, two can withstand him, and a three-fourth core is not broke, quickly broken. Be reminded that Sunday school is the tool that is a part of that cord. Yeah. In my closing, a strong Sunday school makes the low light for the pastor so that he can hear from God effectively to feed the sheep. Yes. Your Sunday school class can be the perfect outlet for the spiritual or natural need without pastor even knowing about it. Everything does not have to be brought to his attention. Attending Sunday school teaches the body of Christ so many things about how to conduct oneself in many situations that we encounter. From the youngest to the oldest, we must make Sunday school just as important as attending Sunday morning service. Your very soul depends on it. Yeah. Lastly, I request your assistance in solidifying the number one reason why Sunday school is important to the church and how it benefits the students. For those who attend Sunday school and for those who now have a renewed mindset to start attending, please raise your right hand with me and repeat after me. A child saved, a child saved is a soul saved, a soul saved. Plus, a life. plus a life. Be blessed. There's something mighty sweet about the Lord, about the Lord. Something mighty sweet about the Lord. Yes. Yes. 
Amen. You just say, Sally Sue, Justina. Something ought to happen. Uh-huh. You just say, Theodore. Nothing will happen, maybe. Timothy. Hmm. But I dare you to say Jesus. Tennessee. The name was given Frank Jefferson Anderson Jr. They said, who is this? But after they heard the sermon, after they saw the anointing, after they saw the power of God, then Bishop Blake said, I know who I need. I need that Bishop from Arkansas. That evangelistic amen Shouting preacher that preached the word of God. And I want you to know every time we hear that name, second jurisdiction, something ought to happen. But then not the woman at the well said, Come see a man. Uh -huh. Then I tell the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God. And when we hear that name, Mr. Frank Jefferson Anderson, second jurisdiction, George. Something ought to happen. Amen. Ought to be a spring in our step. Amen. A praise on our lips. Thank God for the leader of the second jurisdiction of Arkansas. And today I'm happy to present him the one and only in living color, alive and well, preaching the gospel. Stand with me now. <laughs> Amen. The Bishop Frank Jefferson. Anderson, Junior, put your hand together and welcome our leader. They think Bishop Anderson. Praise the Lord with my hands lifted up. With my heart filled with praise. Would you just touch him now? Whatever you need, you're in the right place right now at the right time for something good to happen to you. Come on with a heart of thanksgiving.
are blessing the Lord. It's so wonderful to be in the house of the Lord tonight and to be standing by the person that you're standing by. Now, would you share with persons on both sides of him some of the things God's doing for you right now?
Superintendent Slater, would you give him a hand? Superintendent Slater, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Amen. On the women's side, Mother Watkins, would you please stand? Come on, give her a hand. Would her staff please stand all the district missionaries and their assistants? Come on, clap your hands for them. God bless every missionary in the room. Would you stand all over the place, all missionaries? Praise the Lord, amen. Look at all the missionaries that we have. All of our pastors and elders and ministers, would you stand? God for Pastor Rogers, who allow us to come in with the different services. God bless you in the Bible way. Amen, family. Thank God for uh, our chairperson of the Ames, Elder Thaddeus Bucre Rogers. Come on, give him a hand, praise the Lord. Glad to see Superintendent Marks. While they in tenure, in tenure, one of the oldest superintendents that we have in the second jurisdiction, in tenure, come on, give him a hand, praise the Lord. Working by his side, missionary, God bless you, amen. Doctor, amen, Box. praise the Lord, amen. Give it up for Lady Anderson, would you do that? Amen, God bless Lady Anderson, 
praise the Lord. Come on, would you give a hand to my granddaughter? Amen. Caitlin Grace. Praise the Lord. Amen. She makes the president list at college. Come on, give her a hand. Praise the Lord. Amen. She ain't just sitting around looking cute. <laughs> praise the Lord. Amen. Celebrate this choir. Come on, praise the Lord. Now all of our leaders, I want you to celebrate the lay people. Come on. God bless you. God bless you. Amen. You may not own a title, but you have a testimony. Praise the Lord. And don't and don't trade in your type. Don't trade in your testimony for a title. Amen. God bless you because you are the one who make us and support us to help us to be who we are. And would you lead us, look at them and tell us that we will not let you down. I didn't get enough people to say it. Come on. We will not let you down. Praise the Lord. God bless. Amen. Very quiet person. I was chairman. I'm the president of the usher board. Amen. Brother Furlo, who's doing just a wonderful job. Amen. And his wife working with him 110%. Praise the Lord. We thank God for the representative of the usher department tonight. He's a member of our church there in, at Sinai Church of God in Christ. Wonderful job. Pastors and elders council will come and give our offertory prayer. Amen. Pastor Timothy Hobson, say amen for him. Amen. Tell God our Father, our Savior, we come give you thanks for all that you have done for us. We ask you to bless this gift and let it go to the building of your kingdom. Bless those that gave and bless those that had a desire to give. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God. Amen, amen, and amen. God bless. Come on, give the financial staff a hand. <laughs> Superintendent Swan, who is uh, in rehab, and he's doing, he's doing well, he's doing well. God bless you. We're moving on. Let me introduce this person, and then the choir will sing, and then he will come. Uh, Pastor Jane Sanders, a pastor of the east side, west side. Church of God in Christ in Malvern, Arkansas. He will come after the selection from the choir. Praise the Lord. Then we'll be in the hands of Pastor James Sanders. <laughs> You are the 
strength like no other. Lord, we pray that in this time of sharing that you would encourage our hearts. In the name of Jesus, we, we thank you, God. Thank you for what you're doing in the Sunday school department. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings. Thank you that your words still cover. That there's yet power in your blood. That there's healing in the blood. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We pray for our leaders tonight. We pray for the pastors, God. That you will speak to the pastors on tonight. As well as each one. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen. Continually, and will yet praise thee more and more. That was the 14th, 17th. Oh God, thou hast taught me from my youth. Hitherto have I declared thy wondrous works. Amen. And the 73rd number of Psalms. Beginning at the 12th verse, behold, these are ungodly who prosper in the world. They increase in riches. Verily, I has cleansed my heart in vain. I have washed my hand of innocence. For all the day long have I been plagued, chastened every morning. If I say I will speak thus, behold, I should offend against the generation of thy children. When I thought to know this, it was too painful for me until I went to Sunday school, well, until I went to church, well, in the sanctuary of God. There I understood therein. You may be seated. Yeah. Assignment on this evening is to encourage the, why we, the pastor should go to Sunday school. I asked Pastor Miller, how long did I have? He said, he said until you get through. I started looking at the pro program and I wondered why come they didn't put me with the others. I said, what's up, Pastor Miller? Before he could say anything, he had two brethren. I didn't know what they was packing, so I just said, I'll do what they tell me. <laughs> just got out of a wonderful revival in Jonesboro, preaching for Bishop William Lord. And uh, God moved in a mighty way. Saved, filled with the Holy Ghost. Certainly we was blessed. But on that Thursday morning, my daughter called me and said, Dad, I took off work this weekend and I'm coming up to be with you in the revival. She had never drove that long and uh, by herself. And so Mother Anderson, I, I talked with her and let her know to be extra careful and the importance of driving for yourself as well as others. And by the way, I do give honor to Bishop. <laughs> and to everyone here, God bless you, Mother. God bless you. And so uh, this was about, about 1.30. She called me and said, Dad, I'm getting on the road. 
I said, baby, now you remember going through Little Rock. It's challenging in the evening. I said, so please be careful. About 3.30, she called me crying. She said, Daddy, I just got hit. She said, a man in a truck hit me from behind and knocked me into the vehicle in front. Of course, it totaled the vehicle out that she was driving. I said, but baby, how are you feeling? She said, Daddy, I'm, I'm doing pretty good. I'm just scared. I said, baby, I'm on my way. My wife said, let's call Pastor Miller so he can go in and see about her and be there until you get there. And of course, call Pastor Miller. And he treated my daughter like it was his daughter. I would expect no more out of him, but thank you, Pastor. Amen. But he went to see about my baby. And I told him, I'm sure I'm, I'm on my way now. I'm, I'm a very careful driver, and I try not to break the speed limit, but... Uh, true confession is good for the soul. <laughs> because, because it was my baby. Yeah. And I said, baby, don't you worry. Daddy is on the way. I got to thinking about it. Uh, that could have been a police that called me. Yes, to tell me that your daughter had been in an accident. Yeah. She was dead. Could have been the hospital called him in that she'd been in an accident and we have her in the emergency room. But the fact that she was able to call me herself. <laughs> At the end of the day, God is still my strength. Strength like no other. Amen. I love him with, the, with everything that is within me. Before I go into this text, I, I want to I wanna, uh, tell you, the older I get, the more I love this church. Yes. I grew up in this grand old church of God in Christ, and uh, the older look like people get, they want to move away from it. They call it ministries, and, and I'm not fighting all of that. I just love this grand old church of God in Christ. And they still told me in Sunday school, you can't join in, you... You've got to be born in it. This is the church of God in, in Christ. I was telling my sister on the other day, I thank God for it because this church has brought me a mighty long way. This, this church has done some great things in my, my life. And I, I was like some mother. I said I wouldn't go to school no more but Sunday school. I found out I needed more than Sunday school. <laughs> So I figured I better go and get me a degree, you know, something that's going to help put some money in my pocket. Amen. But I thank God for his, his blessings. I was praying about what to share on, on tonight, and this scripture uh, came to mind. Asaph was really disgruntled in his spirit because of the challenges and the things that he had seen in life. Uh, it looked like the wicked was prospering. They was faring well. And uh, looked like everything that he knew right to do uh -huh, was backfiring on him. Yeah. It's amazing how sometimes even in church the things that we have told people, this will work, that will work. Uh -huh. Sometimes it looked like it backfires on us. And he got so messed up in his spirit until he said, I have cleansed my heart in vain. He said, everything I have given up, I've peered outside myself just to see what I see. I'd like to think that he met David. And David said, come on, meet me in the morning in Sunday school. And when he got to church on Sunday morning, uh -huh, David said, I hear what you're saying, Asaph. I hear that you're disgruntled in your spirit. He said, but I'm a living testimony. He said, so I want to encourage you to fret not yourself because of evil doers. Neither be thy envious against the workers of iniquity. He, he said, for you shall, they shall soon be cut out like the grass and, and withered as the green earth. Asaph, before you give up, trust in the Lord. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways. 
acknowledge him. Commit your way unto the Lord and he'll bring it to pass. Don't you give up a, a self when it looks like giving up is the best way. Don't, don't give up. I, I, I know sometimes we get tired in Sunday school, but giving up is not the best way. Giving up is not, not the answer. As a matter of fact, when you get tired, that's the time to tighten your shoestrings a little bit harder. Press a little bit harder and, and say, I'm going on in and how. Uh, when I became the pastor at West End, and I'm not going to uh, keep you longer than I need to keep you, but when I became the pastor at West End, I, uh, after a couple of years, I, uh, I needed to revamp. I needed to re, re, restructure some stuff. And I believe that you ought to be in Sunday school. Pastors, uh, if I can encourage you in any way, just go to Sunday school. Why should you go? Number one, because you're the pastor. Number two, because you are the leader. And number three, because you need some word too. Yeah. <laughs> because, because we need some word. And so uh, 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 after I had become the pastor, uh, I needed to restructure some stuff. And, and so for three Sundays, I went to, to the office. And it was doing Sunday school. It was the worst mistake I could have made. I went to the office and one of the brothers, he had, he had been in the church about nine, ten months faithful to Sunday school. But he came knocking on the door, and he said, Pastor, I need to talk to you. I said, yes, brother, what's going on? And you got to understand this, brother. God had delivered him from drugs and alcohol, and he got out of prison, and he, he said, Pastor, I just want to be taught. I just want the word. Amen. How many know we need, pre uh, need brothers like that? People that, that just want to know the way of the Lord. And he said, I just want to know the way of the Lord, and I need you to teach me. I say you're in the right place at the right time. But for those three weeks, I was in my office. He knocked on the door and said, Pastor, I need to talk to you. I said, what's going on? He said, brother, he said, Pastor, I don't want to come to Sunday school anymore. I said, what you say? He said, I don't want to come to Sunday school anymore. I said, why? He said, because of what one of the members in the sanctuary. Yes, yes. and said and done. Yes. And Mother Anderson, that cut me to my heart. Yes, yes. That, that he would tell me he don't want to come to Sunday school. He said, Pastor, I love your preaching. I don't want to miss a Sunday. I want to be here to hear the word, but I don't want to be in Sunday school. And brother, the reason we need to go to Sunday school is because there are some things we don't know what's going on if we're in the office. Amen. And, and if I had only been in there, what had happened those three Sundays would not have happened. But because I was busy revamping and doing what I felt God was leading me to do, the fact is I was leaving the church into people's hands who I thought who I thought was capable and had love in their heart, all to discover that the one that was teaching needed to be taught. And so I said, brother, I appreciate you. Went on in the Sunday school and looked like things got better, but the attitude was not thick. Because more than this brother had been hurt. But this brother was bold enough to come and tell me, Pastor, I don't want to come to Sunday school now. Now the brother lived about eight to ten more years. But Superintendent, it was hard for me to get that brother to come to Sunday school. He loved my preaching. He didn't want to miss church. He wanted to hear the word. But he didn't want to be in Sunday school because he didn't want to experience what he had experienced that time. He told me, he said, Pastor, this is not the first time. That Sunday before, this same thing happened again. He said, but I have to come and tell you. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm prettying this up. But evidently, it got pretty ugly until it damaged the whole church. It damaged the whole church. And so 
I had to deal with it. It got so bad I had already prayed that God would give us a mixed congregation. It got so bad that I ended up losing about 25 to 26 members because of it. I was sharing it with some of it with Bishop and Bishop said they need to be made to go get every one of them and bring them. <laughs> Y'all do know how Bishop. <laughs> but, it, but it hurt me, but it, I, I made up in my mind no matter what I need to do, I'm going to do it either before Sunday school or I'm going to do it during the week. But when I come, when it's time for Sunday school, I'm going to be in Sunday school. Asap says, Asap says, I didn't understand it until I showed up in Sunday school. Then I saw the end of the wicked that they shall be turned into hell. That she, they shall be cut off. Asaph said something powerful. He said in around the, the 14, 15 verse, somewhere along in now, the third verse, he says, the wicked was foolish. But in about the 20 verse, somewhere along in now, after he went to church, he said, I was foolish. Because he heard truth. And he realized that he was Foolish. Yes. Anybody ever gone to church and really discovered that you was foolish? Yes. You thought you knew you. You thought you had all the answers. You, you thought you had it fixed out all to discover that you was foolish. I heard the old saint say, I, I went to a meeting one night. My heart wasn't right, but something Got a hold of me. Yeah, yeah. Got a, got a hold of me. And, and when I got there, I received the word of God that pricked me to my heart. And I found out that I wasn't like I thought I were. I found out that I, I was foolish. David said, Asel, if I can help you in any way, I want to help you. Whatever you do, go to church and go to Sunday school. And I'm just paraphrasing it. Uh, uh, some uh, while back, I had a dream because I go to the church every every morning and, and uh, just spend time with the Lord. I had been in a revival, and this particular day, when I got out of the revival, got back home that morning. Next morning, I got up and I went down to the church. About nine o'clock uh, in the morning, I went to church, and and for some reason, I guess I was just still tired and sitting in my chair. I went to sleep. While sleeping, I had a dream. Now, I don't usually tell dreams because we have issues with dreams. Because everybody want to put a prophetic answer behind it. Y'all know how we do. Every, everybody want to say God is saying this and God is saying it. Y'all know how we do. Uh -huh. So if you're going to tell a dream, you just ought to tell it as a dream. So, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to tell it as a dream. And y'all can put y'all into Jesus behind it if you want. I'm just going to tell it as a dream. I had a dream that I, I, I sat in that chair and I, I dreamed that it was the state convocation was going on in Hot Spring. This particular morning, I was late going to Sunday school, late getting up, and this is a dream, mind you. And I needed to run by the church. I got dressed for church, but I needed to run by home church and before I went on to Hot Spring. While in the church, it was about 10 minutes to 10, according to the clock on the wall. Mother Anderson, I look at the door and the door comes open. It was a woman with two children that come in. This woman had to look like she was about 600 to 700 pounds. This woman was struggling just to get in the sanctuary. I was standing there getting ready at the altar, getting ready to leave. And the woman said, looked at me and said, Pastor, are we having Sunday school today? Now, I had never seen that woman before. Don't know her in the dream. Had never seen her and I never will. I don't know. I don't guess. But uh, uh, she was an older woman. Looked like she was about 60 and she was struggling just to get to the front from the front church to the, to the uh, front seat. She was just struggling, just breathing hard, just panting uh, uh, infusionsly, just trying to get there. And when she get to the front, she drops down in her seat and she said, Pastor, 
Are we not having Sunday school this morning? I said, no, mother. I said, I'm on my way to Hot Spring to our district, to our state convocation, and I want to be there for Sunday school. She said, the Lord told me, remind you, this is a dream. She said, the Lord told me to come here and to hear you in Sunday school. She said, I said, I said, I'm sorry, mother. I wouldn't say the Lord didn't say it, but come back next Sunday because I've got to go. She said, and the Lord told me to give you this. Uh, she was so weak and she went up here to get her offering. <laughs> and, and, and she was so weak and so the baby reached and, and got the offering and give it to me. And uh, she started crying and she said, Pastor, I know you got to go, but will you please give me a few minute lesson? She said, will you please, God told me that if I just come here and hear you teach to me in Sunday school, everything would be all right. And of course, uh, against my better judgment in the dream, because I've got to go on to Hot Spring to be in the state meeting and Sunday school. But I went to Isaiah, the 50, uh, the 40th, uh, 40th chapter of Isaiah, and around the 17th verse, he said, Has that not known? Has that not heard? That the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth, Faith not. And, uh, I'm just reading it. I said, he, neither is he weary. Mother, mother is struggling. And I said, neither is he weary. And I said, mama, look at the text. There's no searching of his understanding. He, he, he giveth power to the faith and to them that have no might. He increases a strength. I said, I said, mama, he will increase. Your, your strength hang on in there. By that time, mama really get the crying. Mama, mama crying showed up. I said, mama, even the youth shall faint and be weary. And the young man shall utterly fall. Mama, but they that wait upon the Lord. This is the truth. In, in the dream, y'all, in the dream, this, this mother that couldn't hardly stand up. In the dream, this mother that couldn't hardly breathe. In the dream, this mother having a struggle talking. I looked at this mother in Sunday school while reading the scripture. This mother body start dissolving. Then this mother start getting smaller and smaller right before my eyes. And, and now I'm crying. I said, I said, mother, but they that wait upon the Lord, he shall renew their strength. They, they shall mount up on wings of thee. By that time, mama done lost about 150 pounds. After a while, she done lost another 150 pounds. And after a while, she done lost another 150 pounds. And about time I got through teaching to her, that mother had lost over 500 pounds. Mother got a smile on her face. And by that time, the baby started jumping up. Say, mama, mama, you told us. Mama, mama, you told us that would happen. I'm wondering what did she tell him? He said, mama, you told us that if we just get to Sunday school and hear that preacher talk, that God will heal your body. That God will touch your life. That God. <laughs> this Sunday school, y'all, so I don't pose to preach, but... But, but she told me, say, say, you told me that if, if I just get to Sunday school and hear that preacher uh, talk, God will make a trans, uh, 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 will change your life and, and touch your body. Amen. And, and I say, look at God. I'm getting ready to close because, because I feel a, a, a happy, happy in my belly. <laughs> But, 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 but I, I said, I said, I started crying too, Superintendent Jones. Now I'm crying because of joy. Because I see what God has done in Sunday school. And listen, I've been in Sunday school and I've seen souls saved. And, and I've seen people filled with the Holy Ghost. And, and I've seen miracles after miracles in Sunday school. And, and I've seen bodies healed. And, and I've seen lives changed. And, and all I'm trying to tell you is you got to go to Sunday school because there is a word, a word from the Lord. And 
if I could just get there, God would change your heart and God would change your mind. But they that wait upon the Lord, He shall renew your strength. You got to wait on it and get in the Word and let the Word get in you. church getting ready for Sunday school this brother came in the church you could tell because he smelled like what he had been in in bad shape breath was smelling body was smelling on drugs had got up that morning drinking before he came to church and I was sitting in there and he came in and he said, Pastor, you the one I came to see. <laughs> Out of all the people, others, that he could have came to see, he said, you the one that I came to see. He said, I'm not happy with my life. I'm not happy with how my life has turned out. He said, and you, my last resort. And you all, what if I had not been there? What if I had been in the office and he not saw anybody in the church? But the fact that I was there, first I listened to him. Not one time did I judge him. I listened to him. He poured out his complaint. He poured out his pain, his hurt. And he started crying and for the second time, 
and the second individual. God said, before you say anything, cry with him. Cry with him. And I listened to him talking. And tears fell under my eyes. Because of the pain that he was dealing with. People will not interrupt us, pastors, when we're preaching. <laughs> but in Sunday school, they have an opportunity. And what I love about Sunday school is that the pastor and the whole congregation can come together as one. And we can hear each other. So I start praying for the brother. The Lord sobered him up. Saved him. And filled him with the Holy Ghost. I said, brother, where are you from? He said, I'm from Louisiana. He said, but I came for a funeral, but I couldn't leave the way I am. He said, but I had heard of you, and I had to get there. He went home a different way. I made you to be the watchman. You have a responsibility. I may not teach Sunday school, but I'm in Sunday school. And when it's time for me to speak, I will speak. If I don't agree, I will listen to God and make it known. One of the missionaries, they was talking and they were so off the wall. Because that do happen. And I'm not saying it to put them down, but, but I started going to scriptures. And if I had not grew up in Sunday school, I wouldn't have known them. And so I started showing them what the word said. And when I got through the missionary, one of them started crying. And she said, I thank God you're the pastor. And I'm a member. <laughs> because how many know God is not going to give the church what he gives the leader? He that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. One more time, everybody stand. The altar is open. Our state evangelist told me to go on and make the altar call. If you don't know the Lord first, we want to give you an opportunity. What a difference he'll make in your life. He did it for all of us. And he'll do it for you. He's a healer if the world don't believe it. He is a deliverer. And you don't have to leave here like you came. If there's sickness in your body. The doctor has given you a bad report. Diabetes heart trouble, blood pressure problems, come to the altar. These preachers are here to pray for you. Now listen, you have an opportunity because those of you that know me know I'm a real preacher. You can't make me believe that nobody in here got high blood pressure. But you don't have to go home with it. You can't make me believe that there's not a diabetic in this house. But you don't have to go home with it. And that's the key is you don't have to go home with it. Two years ago, and I was listening to their testimony, but two years ago, I was having serious pains in my chest. I knew it was my heart. I knew it was my heart. I went to the doctor. The doctor set me up with a specialist up here, up here in Little Rock. 
He said, we got to do some tests. We came and done some tests. He said, we got to do some more tests because I don't like what I see. I went back home and I said, church, I know my heart is acting up. But I believe God and I believe if you pray for me, everything will be all right. They prayed for me. I went back for the test. And when the doctor got through, he said, Brother Sanders, you may die from something. He said, but ain't nothing wrong with your heart. I believe the prayer of the righteous get a telling. Dear God of heaven, will you touch today? Will you touch right now? Will you heal right now? Show yourself mighty. In the name of Jesus, there's nothing too hard for you. There's nothing too hard for you. I thank you, God, that it's by your stripes I'm healed. I thank you, Lord, that it's by your stripes I'm delivered and I'm set free. Thank you, Lord, that your grace, that your grace is extended for me. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. If there's any sinners in this house, Lord, forgive sin. Wash in your blood. Cleanse and make whole. Deliver and set free. In the name of Jesus. Love flows because God is in control. A church where God is really real. Hi, my name is Dennis Rogers, pastor here at the Greater New Bible Way Church of God in Christ. I would like to welcome you to our services. Service times are Sunday morning prayer and Sunday school, 9 a.m. Sunday morning worship, 11 a.m. Sunday evening Pentecostal service, 7 p.m. Midweek service, Thursday, 7 p.m.